Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Silverstone, no less. And the other thing I'm excited to introduce is the McLaren Senna. Now, the significance of today is that we are at a pure McLaren day, which is an exclusive day purely for McLaren clients or McLaren prospects and enthusiasts to come down and immerse themselves in the McLaren experience. And we couldn't think of a better environment in which to bring down the Senna and get it back on track for the very first time since it was out in the Middle East. The last time that I drove this car on track was Yas Marina circuit out in Abu Dhabi. Today, we're gonna shake it down on Silverstone and then we're gonna immerse you in a flat out lap to see what this thing is all about, arguably on its home track. So we've just had some fresh sticky rubber applied to it. I'm gonna go out and scrub those in now. And then once the car's all settled in, we're gonna take you along for a ride and see what this thing is like, because I've never driven it here flat out at Silverstone. Okay, the all important feature in a McLaren Senna that in my opinion makes the Senna a Senna is race mode. Now this system is so extreme in the transformation of its car that my insurance would be invalidated if I was to use it on the road in this configuration. So unlike most buttons that you press in sports cars and supercars that might increase throttle response or you know adjust the arrow a little bit, this thing totally transforms. So I have to press race mode once and then hold it and then it'll double check with me that I want it again just to make sure and then off we go. So right here, look, you'll see just there, it is counting down in percentages of the ride height adjustment that's taking place. So you can see right here, rear's dropping 18, 19, 20 mil, front's dropping to 28, 30 mil. This really well and truly absolutely slams Senna on the ground. And that is when the sort of ground effect aero switches on in this car. So you'd be forgiven for thinking that because of the big wing and the fairly aggressive front splitter, that's where all of the aero comes from. But a lot of it is from underneath the car and that doesn't switch on until it is really sitting super slammed. So if we have a look on the outside of the car now, you'll see the profile of the tire from the arch. They are super tucked in. And that's when Senna, in my opinion, becomes Senna. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be cool. First time with the Senna on the Silverstone full GP circuit. Sun is out, man. This is gonna be great. And this really is the perfect environment. This is exactly the sort of circuit that Senna was designed for. Full GP tracks, smooth, open, fast tarmac. Let's see what it's all about. Now there is a bit of traffic on, as we are here as a pure McLaren event, so not everyone's out here to, to fully send it, but let's see how it goes.
trailing some weight in on the nose and the rear wants it to rotate but when it does it's progressive it's not as intimidating as it might suggest on paper
timbre adjustment. I'd be interested to see if you could play with this, the front suspension to perhaps switch on that front splitter a little bit more. I think there's more in reserve in that front splitter to help plant that front end. But outside of understeer, and that's only on heavy throttle exit on tighter lock, outside of that, this thing is unreal. Honestly, oh, just immense. What a machine. Right, obviously, I'm slightly biased. I'm gonna say this thing is amazing, but honestly, I'm trying to think of, of another car to compare it to in terms of the next closest thing I actually think is, is way up rather than a little bit back. So you probably compare it maybe with a GT2 RS, even though it's a, it is a step on. I'd actually say it's closer to a Valkyrie, even though it's not close to one, it's closer to one than the next closest thing. Defining feature by far and away is the brakes combined with the aero. So at ultra high speed, uh, coming down hangar, you're doing 170 miles an hour. At that speed, you've got over 800 kilograms of downforce pressing the tires into the tarmac. And at that stage, when you slam on those brakes, the deceleration combined with the aero that keeps it super stable, just gives you the most confidence. It's just incredible. And there's no twitch or squirm, it just absolutely anchors on, your chest hits that, that seat belt, and the way that it decels is phenomenal. Now, the sounds it makes, obviously it's not naturally aspirated, it's heavily turbocharged, but because there's no sound deadening in it at all, and the way that McLaren connect the uh, engine to the carbon tub, the way that it resonates as a frequency, you can feel that resonate up through the mounts of the seats. So there's always that sort of vibration there available to you. And touching back onto lack of sound deadening, as you're driving around the circuit, the marble pickup hits the inside of the arches and it sounds like someone's shooting the side of the car with a machine gun. That's how stripped out this thing is, all in the name of weight saving. So in terms of dynamics, phenomenal, sound, pull, torque, fantastic. The only letdown, and you can drive through some of it, is the understeer. Now there's not understeer on entry, going back to the amount of pressure you've got, forcing those tires in, and it quite enjoys trail braking, so you can keep the weight on the nose as you're entering a corner, all good. It's actually exit. Once you're past the apex and you squirt that throttle, it's almost sort of speedboat-esque. It sort of sits down on its haunches and then sort of slingshots you out, but it feels like that nose gets a little bit light, and so it understeers out of the corner, which can be a bit frustrating. I reckon, though, we could take it to someone like String Theory, maybe, Then comments below. I reckon, there's more to get out of this. So this is one of the biggest front splitters in the automotive world. So certainly, should I correctly say, in the road legal automotive world. This is one of the largest front splitters. And I think with a subtle suspension tweak and perhaps a geo slash camber adjustment on these fronts, there's definitely a little bit more to gain out of this front end. Because I reckon this isn't working to its full advantage on exit. So let's speak to McLaren, let's speak to String Theory, see what we can get out of it, tweak it, and come back. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Go!